Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be checking out an application called 3D Code. I've had a lot of requests to cover this one over the years and for some reason I just haven't. So we're going to rectify that today. I'm going to look at it now. Also 3D Code 2022 was just recently released which is actually somewhat amazing as the developers are Ukrainian and with the hell on earth going on around them they still managed to get an update out which is very impressive. I hope you guys are all doing okay and without further ado let's jump in and take a look at 3D Code in action. Now this one the closest thing I can think to is in Existence is ZBrush. The direct competitor is ZBrush. Now, the nice thing is 3D Coat costs literally half as much. Uh, and also, by the way, you can buy it. You don't need to license it. So if subscriptions are not your thing, that's not a problem. It's available for Windows and Mac. I do not think there is a Linux version out there. And one thing I will say as a negative right away, this is all 3D applications. I don't know why, but as they add new features, they just add new menus. Eventually, you got to clean things up and make it easier to work with. There are a lot of menus in this. So I'm not a competent person in this program. So just be aware of that. There are a lot of things this guy can do. It can be sculpting. Uh, Voxel-based sculpting is like the primary trick, but also is used for um, UV editing, texture creation, uh, rendering, retopologizing, and there's also polygonal modeling tools in here, but we are going to show voxel-based sculpting. We start with a template here. You've got a number of different options. We're going to start with uh, a human body like so. You, you obviously could start from absolutely nothing. There's also some really neat kit bashing tools in here. I'll hopefully demonstrate to you in this demo. It is a pretty straightforward sculpting application. So I'm going to go here we'll zoom in um and this guy is being done entirely in voxels voxels are known as volumetric pixels basically think of this guy as being made out of millions of tiny cubes that we we're working with together and then later on you do something called retopologizing which is to turn it into a lower polygon count version we'll hopefully show you that as well show you the very basics if you've ever done any sculpting all the tools you expect are here so for example you can add more clay to a surface so we're going to turn Make sure symmetry is turned on. Symmetry tools are over here. So enable symmetry along the x-axis. So there you can see anything I do on this side will also be done on that side. Using the right mouse button, I can change the size of our manipulator and going up and down from inside of it, I can also change the strength of it. So we got a fairly big and fairly uh, moderate amount that we're gonna pull things up and you could basically just start adding clay. So you can see here, we're, we're actually, we're giving this guy breasts. Uh, we'll also give him a belly so we come down here we can start and right now we're adding um, we're adding uh, clay onto our surface we've also got other tools here for things such as smoothing things out so if we want to make it a little bit smoother we can do so as well now you'll notice there is the clay version there is the voxel version and there is the clay drawing version this gets a little confusing i think the major difference is this is surface level only and faster this is all voxel based but i'm not 100 percent certain where one tool begins and another tool ends another thing you'll notice here is we have a smooth but we also have a smooth and another thing you'll see here is we have this order going c c d f f and then complete and utterly random there seems to be no real logic to the way things are organized not even by popularity that does get a bit frustrating I'm trying to figure this thing out the ui could definitely use a facelift but at the same time there is a lot of um, keyboard customization so if you're using this tool you'll get to know it like the back of your hand in no time at all uh you can hold down control by the way and do the negative of whatever your tool here is so uh, well i'm on smooth right now so if i'm doing uh grow and I do a negative it will do the opposite it'll dig it in like so we had a number of other tools here for example I can come in and give this guy some horns so I'll come on down here and we'll do spikes we'll go on the side of his head like so and let's let's add horn there we go so you can add horns in no problems or we can give spikes we can make this guy into wolverine uh I guess probably want to make this a little bit smaller before I do that all right, so let's make this guy into Wolverine. So really um, typical sculpting tools that you would expect. You've also got tools in here for literally just, I could cut little bits out of it. Um, there's some other really neat kind of semi-unique things in here as well. So for example, if I wanted to give this guy a cape, I could come in here and pick up the cloth tool like this guy right here. Let me just zoom back out. We will kind of orientate it this way and then somewhat like this, drop it down a little bit like so. And now we're going to go ahead and we can start running the simulation. And what it's going to do is basically physically simulate cloth running on that surface. You've got control. You can move it around. You can stretch. You can pinch it in and so on. Uh, but once you're happy with your simulation, you can go ahead and stop. And we can go ahead and create a cloth object. I don't know why it tessellated like that, um, but that's kind of um, a more you know thing. Speaking of tessellation, let me get rid of that cloth right now. Uh, you do have abilities down here, such as this guy for resampling. So right now we're using 1.9 million polygons for this voxelized guy, which by the way, those details are available down here. Um, I can say, okay, well, I want to use much less. 
So I could go down to a quarter of that amount or well under a quarter of that amount. So you can actually change out the amount to use. You can go way up, way down. I'm going to cancel out. So at any particular time, if you want to drop down the number of polygons used, uh, you can do so that way. You've also got tools in here for doing things like subdivisions. We can also work from uh, curves. There is a ton of functionality in here that I'm not going to be showcasing today. Uh, by the way, you've also got a number of materials. So for example, we can uh, make this guy. Why does it look like he's got a lion? That is such a weird coincidence. But uh, you have materials and material libraries built in there, PBR-based workflow. There is a renderer in here as well. I want to showcase one other thing that I find really unique um, to this tool, especially for game developers. If you're doing like level blocking in or whatever, you can actually kit bash things. So come over here. You're going to see you've got a number of different shapes to work from that you can like literally drop into the scene and work together. You've even got these like building block looking ones over here. So I could drop this guy uh, into the scene. So I'm going to be creating using joints and I can basically just drop a joint in here. I mean, just now, uh, alt and right click like so. And then they, they basically start to build together like Lego blocks. And this is fully sculptable. So you can, after you've created it, however you want, you can, uh, come in later on and change it a bit. So here you can see, I can put these, these angles in and we can go various different directions and orientations. And you've got a number of different um, ways to work with. So for example, if I was working with uh, piping, I can start bringing in these pipes and then snap them onto the surfaces. And so if I'm like quick making, um, say again, a level, want to start level prototyping, or if I'm doing, um, say, uh, greebling for sci-fi spaceships, etc. You can use this quick kind of snap together uh, materials to work with. And then the cool thing is, once again, this is all, um, it's all sculptable. So everything here is an object. So once I'm done with it, I can come in here, for example, and I can say, all right, let's flatten. And I can come in here and we can just start flattening down an edge or whatever. So it, it is a really kind of cool feature on top of it. I very much like that. So I'm again going to hide it though. And we'll go back to our model over there. So that is the basics of sculpting. There's a ton of sculpting functionality. Obviously, uh, I'm not particularly great with this program. And as you can see, there is a lot here that I'm not working with. But if you've used a sculpting application, you've got an idea of the kind of functionality you have here. Uh, again, you also have those materials. You've also got uh, surfaces you can work with here. So you can, uh, you know, scrape patterns and such on surfaces using those. Uh, we do have a number of predefined materials here that we could quickly drop in. You can create your own there as well. Um, and then you also do have painting tools in here. So you can go into paint mode. Uh, we're not going to paint. I also don't know if you can paint right away without UV mapping because you can actually paint directly to the voxels. And you see here, you've got things like pencils, airbrushes, and so on for um, painting on your surfaces. But the last thing I'm going to show is instead retopology, which for uh, game development, after you've sculpted out your object, there's a pretty good chance you're going to want to do retopology. And what we can do here with it set up is now I can come in and I could start going, let's say right here, I'll do an add split. And I could literally just start drawing polygons on my existing surface. So I had to pick the one spot that was, okay, so I escape from that. I'll start here where it's not super shiny so you can actually see what I'm doing. So basically you just come on down here and you start drawing your polygon. And then you literally start drawing the next one and so on. So you could create, you're, you're got all the tools in here for doing retopology of your surface, including again, you can do a knife to cut your existing topologies. Like so, uh, you've also got, you've got tools in place for, uh, drawing just quick curves. So we've got a, um, where's the smart tool. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Smart, smart retopo. If so we can come in here and basically just go, okay, here, there. And then I go here, there, and it will automatically create topology along that line. So if you want to do retop, okay, that was terrible. But if you want to create that low polygon version on top of your really high polygon version of things, this has a ton of tools and functionality in here for you. And then for myself being um, lazy, there's this guy, and this is actually one of the best retopology tools I have ever seen in terms of functionality. You can come in here. I think I picked the right thing. Yeah, so auto retopology, right click, auto retopo, uh, and then you can all of these instructions for how to do things. Like, yeah, okay, we're good. So we'll let it go ahead and do its thing. This can take a little bit of time. So now you come in, you can paint in uh, details where it should um, pay more attention to the 
the meshing there. I'm going to go with the default. Default will let it go ahead and run its thing. So this is the retopology tools for that underlying sculpt we did, uh, where it's just going to do it for you. And I find that the mesh it generates here with their auto retopology tools are about as good as I can create myself. So there you see, we've got a very low polygon version. Uh, looks like under 10,000 triangles of our overlying sculpt. It does, a, it's again, it is one of the best retopology automatic tools I have ever seen. Uh, that is a very clean mesh, all quads. It's done the angles good. It's gotten uh, the contours that I would expect it to pay attention to. It's done very well on them. Um, there's not a lot of weird joins or seams. This would animate quite well. This is a good retopo, and this is as good as I would have done if I had done it manually by hand. And then you've got the ability to, to tweak everything that it's done here. You can create UV maps out of it. I haven't really got into the UV side of the tooling here, so I'm not going to cover that. But just so you know here, you do have other profiles here. So you do have some tools here specifically for uh, polygonal modeling tools. So then we've got that nice retopoed mesh on here. Uh, you could come down here and uh, tweak the polygons so you're not dealing with voxels anymore this raw polygon tools uh you have spline based tools here as well so you could do things uh, that way as well you can tweak things out you've got brush which is like a a soft selection style brush so this is working with polygons but you can do see quick quick edits that way um you do, I think, have, yeah, you have subdivision tools in here as well. So if you'd rather work with a traditional polygon tool workflow or you've already done your retopo, you just want to make some mild tweaks, that is what this set of tools is all about. So you can do polygonal modeling here and you can straight down to uh, creating an individual polygon or deleting individual polygons, cutting them up accordingly. You've got knife tools in here as well. So there is a decent set of low polygon modeling tools in here as well, which is, again, important to game development. Uh, you have some tools here specifically for kit bashing for uh, kind of what we saw earlier where we were building things out of uh, other basic building blocks so there's kit bash version there this is more i think for 3d printing so we're, we're not going to deal with it there but you saw we used those tools uh directly while we were in the sculpting so they're available over here i imagine you can also bring in your own easily enough i don't know what the process yeah so it's literally just an obj file or fbx or whatever so you can bring in your own um kits to use as part of that process but it's a nice uh way of doing things again like sci-fi spaceships or level prototyping and so on uh but when you're all done you also do have rendering functionality here so you can render out uh, your scene uh save it out you've got things like screen space reflections illumination and so on you can see the real-time results of it over there uh, so you do have a renderer here so you can render out your results. Um, so if you need to create a still image result of it, you could do so. There are some uh, post-processing effects, node-based, so um, a variety of different things that we can do over here. Again, beyond the scope of what I want to do. And also, let's get out of there. All right. Uh, so that's kind of a, ooh, and we crashed. And that's something else. <laughs> it does on occasion crash, but that is a good time to end things there. So you got a good sampling of what 3D Code is all about. It is a traditional sculpting tool, the peer of like uh, ZBrush, Bundbox, and more and more each day Blender. Uh, but at the same time, it is also, again, low polygon modeling, uh, auto retopology and retopology, some of the best retopology tools I've ever seen in a product, to be honest. And that's something I hate doing. Uh, so that the fact that that auto retopology thing works so well is is kind of uh, interesting to me. So if you're interested in checking out 3D Coat, again, there was that update, the 2022 version that was just released about uh, three weeks ago, I believe it was. Uh, they improved the voxel and surface sculpting speeds. The auto retopology was improved as well for organic and hard surface models. We saw that in action in this video today. New voxel brush engine added for working with voxel brushes. Uh, new Alphas collection for creating uh, surfaces and reliefs. I didn't really cover that today. Some stuff to the uh, core APIs. There is a new bevel tool for working with edges. You can just set up like a curve profile and make a bevel around a sharp edge. Uh, some new curve tools for low polygon modeling. And you can now export in GLTF format, which is nice if you are working with, say, the Godot game engine or Blender, uh, where GLTF tends to work better than FBX uh, format as an interchange format. So definitely nice to see that new option there as well. So that is the 2022.16 release. If you want to buy it, as I mentioned early on, uh, there is just one-time purchase, the old school way of buying things. Uh, 379 euro, which I think ZBrush right now is about... Oh, 
thousand euro moto uh another modeling tool more on the polygonal side of things it is about a thousand dollars right now i think so this is definitely uh on the cheap side of software uh whereas you know max and i are about three or four grand a piece and of course blender is free and i know people are going to mention that in the comments but uh one-time purchase is available 379 euro uh, gives you a year of updates or you can rent it uh, you got uh node lock seven payments or 11 payments not really sure the difference there. Uh, monthly subscription at 20 euro a month, or you can pay up front for a year, 150 bucks. So basically it boils down to you. If you know you're going to keep using this, you are actually better to get the subscription because uh, that will get you updates the entire time you're doing so. Whereas the permanent is if you're going to use it for less than two and a half years, it seems like that is where the deal is here. So uh, it is nice though that you can buy it outright. Now, the most important thing here is there's also everything we saw today was a free trial, works for 30 days, unlimited uh, time you can use it for learning. So if you wanna check this thing out, you can quite literally uh, download it without precondition, just come on in here, head in. Uh, you do have to have an account and that's about it. Oh, there is a Linux version, darn it. Okay, I was wrong early on. I'm going to have to put an annotation in. I didn't see that earlier on. I thought it was Windows and Mac only, but there is a Linux version as well, which I guess is even better. So if you want to check out 3D Coat, completely free trial, go ahead and do so. Uh, let me know what you think of it, of my uh, awkward fumbling while using this application. Also, let me know what you think about uh, 3D application design. Every time they add a new feature, they just add a new menu and eventually it becomes super overwhelmingly cluttered. 3D Coat has it to a little bit. ZBrush has it to a lot of bit. Uh, let me know what you think of these UI in general it's kind of one of those things that like once you get used to it you're going to just be using all kind of keyboard shortcuts so you're not going to care anyways and uh yeah i'm curious what you think of the ui experience here and what you think between 3d coat and zbrush have you used both which one would you recommend or are you just team blender let me know comments down below i'll talk to you all later goodbye